my name is Michelle. I'm the student director at Flatirons Longmont for the next couple of weeks. I'm actually gonna be stepping down from my role in Longmont to spend some more time with my girls. Uh, don't worry, you can still see excellent, hilarious videos of my two and a half year old by finding her on TikTok. Uh, she's at Evie being Evie, she's a quality follow. Uh, I wanna introduce you to the new student director at Flatirons Longmont, Caleb Flowers. Yay. I'm imagining you're clapping along with me. Uh, Caleb, tell us uh, three facts about yourself. Man, three facts about myself. Um, well, first of all, I don't have a TikTok yet. I think I probably will um, at some point. Uh, I have two cats. They're great. Um, and third, my wife and I do foster care. Aww. Yeah, so that's me in a nutshell. Um, thank you so much for joining us for our second week of Cause of Death. Um, we're looking forward to jumping into that next. So last week, Lindsay talked about how sin separates us from God. And if that all sounds kind of confusing to you, you can actually go back and watch that video and see for yourself what we're talking about. Um, and we have all been separated from each other for the last, yeah. I don't know how long, it feels like maybe it's been forever. Uh, so in this social distancing time, I have been watching a lot of movies mm. and I have a two year old at home. And so we've been watching a lot of Disney Plus movies. Uh, so one that stood out to me, because I knew we were going to be talking about this, is Beauty and the Beast, which is surprisingly scary. I don't know. It really is. Yeah, I, I don't remember being scared, but Everly was definitely terrified. <laughs> She's like, Mommy, will you hold me? Anyway, th there's a very scary part where Maurice, Belle's father, is in jail by the Beast, and the Beast is like, no, he's going to stay here forever. And Belle's like, no, my father, he save him and he's like no he has to stay here forever and she comes up with this idea and is like wait take me instead i've come for my father please let him out can't you see he's sick and he shouldn't have trespassed here but he could die please I i'll do anything there's nothing you can do he's my prisoner oh there must be some way i can wait Take me instead. You. You would take his place? Oh, no. You don't know what you're doing. If I did, would you let him go? Yes. And it's this super dramatic line that she takes her father's place mm. in the Beast's prison. Have you watched any movies yes. like that? Um, Harry Potter is actually a big thing in our house. We try to watch it. We watch all the Harry Potters three to four times a year. Um, we're big fans. And if you don't know about Harry Potter, kind of what happens in the beginning um, is there's this big bad guy, we're not gonna say his name, but um, he is trying to like kill little baby Harry Potter. And Harry Potter's mom is like, no, and she gets in between, you know, the guy we're not gonna talk about killing little baby Harry Potter. And it's like the love that his mom has for Harry actually ends up like saving his life. What we're talking about in this series, Cause of Death, is that there is death in the world, and so where did that come from, and, and what's the point? And so, again, one of the things Lindsay talked about last week is that sin has separated us, and sin is what causes death of things. Like, it's not necessarily an immediate death of your life, but it causes death in your relationships, and, and it breaks and separates things. And our sin demands payment. Mm. And so what comes up for me is uh, what compels someone to make that kind of sacrifice? Like why would Harry Potter's mom sacrifice herself and why does Belle sacrifice herself for her father? Yeah, well, I, I really think it's that, that love thing, right? That kind of is shared in, in the family where um, the people who are like Harry Potter's mom and Belle, they want to do what's necessary to take care of the people that they love. Yeah, I, I had to experience that in my own life. Um, I was adopted, and I was adopted as a, a little baby, like a three and a half month old. So I had done literally nothing but like poop my pants, and uh, I, that doesn't earn your place. It doesn't make you deserve to be loved by a family. But my parents, they still chose this baby that they didn't know, that didn't earn the love that they were gonna give to this baby, and chose me as part of their family. Mm. And so I got to experience what that's like to not deserve this love, but to get to receive it still. Yeah, 
That's really good. That reminds me of, uh, so we do foster care, my wife and I, um, and our first kiddo, we just got a call and they were like, hey, we have this little boy, um, he's three weeks old, can you take him? And we said, yeah, and they're like, okay, great, we'll be there in two hours um, to drop him off. And that's like all the warning we got. You know, we didn't get to see, uh, you know, what color his eyes are or what his hair looks like or know anything else about him other than that. But we really wanted to love him because he didn't have love in those moments and we knew we could give him like what he needed. Last week, Lindsay talked about how sin separates us from God. And the way that I heard that described that really connected with me is that sin is like vandalism. And so something that's really beautiful, when it gets vandalized, it becomes really ugly. One year when I was growing up in the summer, there was the year of the slug. And so we came home to our house and there were these huge slugs, I swear they were this big, crawling up the side of our house. And there were so many of them. And I love my house. I think my house is still like the most beautiful house in the world. But there were all these slugs that it made it feel unlivable and so ugly. Like I didn't even want to walk through the door because the slugs were there and they are so, so gross. And that's what sin is like for us, that we are something that God loves and that God created, but sin has essentially been a slug and has made it so that we are ugly. Sin is ugly to God and and it invades our lives because it's part of our nature. And that demands a sacrifice so that that sin could be removed. And and we needed a perfect sacrifice. And, And that's where we're headed. And that's why we celebrate Easter, because Jesus was that perfect sacrifice that takes away that sin, that strips away the slugs and the vandalism and makes things beautiful again. So like Michelle was saying, we can't get rid of the slugs or sin by ourselves. There's this verse um, in Romans 5, 6 that says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Last week, Lindsay asked you guys all to kind of sit down and talk to a leader that you trust or your parents or whatever and come up with a sin that is slowly killing everything in your life. All right, so right now I want you to kind of bring that to mind and think about that. And what this verse is saying here in Romans is that when you were doing that thing, when you were looking at, at that app that you're not supposed to have or when you were like yelling at your parents for the you know, fifth time in the day or when you were... Um, being mean to your sibling, whatever your sin thing is, when you were doing that, that's the moment that Jesus decided he would die for. I genuinely think that Romans 5, 6 is one of like the most important verses that we can learn as we're trying to understand how God loves us and what he does for us. So sin has totally separated us from God, and there was nothing that we could do to make that better. We are utterly helpless to clean ourselves up, but God still wants to have a relationship with us because he loves us and he chose us. And so while we were utterly helpless, he sends us Jesus, this perfect sacrifice that allows us to be reconnected to him. And that's what we get to celebrate at Easter. And that's why this whole series exists. But what does that mean in your real life? That's our challenge for you this week, is to think about why does this story, why does this man who lived all these years ago matter in your life today? As you sit home for however many weeks on end in 2020, why does this story matter in your life? And if you don't know, or you don't know how to start finding an answer to that, I encourage you to reach out to your leaders or to your parents or to somebody else that you know that has a relationship with Jesus and ask them, why does this story make a difference in your life? How do you see that this matters in your day-to-day walking around everyday life? Yeah. Um, The other thing that we want you guys to do this week is we want you to take that Romans 5, 6 that we talked about a minute ago and we want you to try to memorize it. Um, We think it's really important to memorize the Bible because it really helps to change the way that you think about God and the way that you view the world. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We're going to have content just like this that we're going to post each week after it. Um, So we'd love for you to tune in on that. We miss you guys. We love you. And make sure to wash your hands.